Number 46, confirm that the results of the example, example 8.7, do conserve momentum in both the x and y directions. All right, so here's the example problem, pulled right from the text. And um, this picture will describe what's going on. In addition, I do have the answers for this uh, question as well, already placed into my picture over here. Um, the work is found in the book, and we're just trying to confirm that the results uh, do conserve momentum. So quick uh, synopsis, the uh, velocity of the, there's an initial velocity of the black ball. It's traveling into this uh, black box where it's going to hit a stationary red ball. After the black ball hits the red ball here, it will be uh, deflected at an angle of 45 degrees. All right, I'll just assume it's north of east, and it will be traveling with a final velocity here of 1.5 meters per second. And then the red ball will be uh, deflected downward at an angle of 48.5 degrees, and it has a final velocity of 0.886 meters per second. So now what we have to do is we have to uh, confirm that it does conserve momentum. So basically, let's start with our conservation of momentum formula. It says that the momentum before should equal the momentum after the collision. Now, since we're dealing with... Um, two dimensions here, right? The final velocities here, and therefore their final momentums, um, are in two planes, right? Both the x and the y plane. It's not a pure horizontal or pure vertical problem. And if when that is the case, remember, we would like to break this these vectors up into x and y components and analyze them separately, just like you've done for kinematics and for forces. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a little subscript at the bottom of these two, right? I'm going to say that the initial or the momentum uh, before the collision in the X frame better equal the momentum after the collision in the X frame. All right. And also, uh, I'll just, I'm not going to do another equation, but uh, fully, but remember that it would be the same here for Y as well. Okay. I'll leave them both up, but I'm just going to manipulate this now. So let's break this down. So there's two separate objects before the collision, the moving black ball and the stationary red ball, right? So therefore, I can expand this term to be the momentum before the collision of ball one plus the momentum before the collision of ball two, both in the X frame. All right, should equal then the momentums after the collision, right? So the black ball has now this particular momentum because it has that velocity and it'll have that momentum as well, of the red ball that is because it has this particular velocity. All right, so therefore, the momentum after the collision, um, or I should say the momentum of the first ball after the collision uh, in the x direction, plus the momentum of the second ball after the collision in the x direction. So this statement better be true, okay? And I, I could expand on the y's as well. Uh, it would be the same thing, just substituting out the x's and plugging in y's. So now let's analyze the x components of each of the vectors. So the initial x component before the collision for the first ball here, right, the momentum um, was, well, actually, you know what I'll do? Uh, let's break these down into m and v's, okay? Uh, because remember, momentum is equal to mass multiplied by velocity. So therefore, I could say the mass of the first ball multiplied by the velocity of that first ball, right, before the collision in the x direction, plus the mass of the second ball multiplied by velocity of the second ball before the collision in the x direction should equal the mass of the first ball multiplied by the velocity of that first ball after the collision in the X frame, plus the momentum of the second ball multiplied by velocity of the second ball after the collision in the X frame. So let's look at each of these, right? So what's the velocity um, of the first ball before the collision? Well, it told us two, right? And what's the mass? 0 0.25. Okay, so that's great. So let's just plug some stuff in. So 0 0.25, zero, multiplied by two. That would be the momentum. How about for the second ball? Well, here's its mass, but its velocity before the collision was zero, right? Remember it was stationary, so therefore this is just a plus zero. Expand on this now, the momentum um, was equal to the mass of the first ball after the collision, that is multiplied by the velocity uh, after the collision. And uh, its mass stayed the same, obviously, 0.250, because it's elastic, 0 0.250 multiplied by the, uh, now, Realize it's not going to be the 1.5, right? Don't plug that in. Remember, it's the pure X component. So realize that this triangle is formed over here. I'm going to draw it right. Here's our component triangle, okay? So I got to find the X component of it, meaning this part, okay? So what is the X component of this uh, triangle? Well, 
re, you know, realize you know the hypotenuse, you know this angle, and you're looking for the side adjacent to that angle, therefore it's cosine. All right, I'm just going to skip through all the, the um, steps and just come up right with the formula. You guys should see the pattern by now, I think, assuming you've been doing all the work, right? So uh, let's just plug in now. So we have 1.50 times then cosine of 45. Great, and then that will be added to. Now we need the x component for this vector. Again, it's the same thing here, you know, finding that triangle component. Okay, I know the hypotenuse, I know this angle, I'm looking for the side adjacent. Therefore, I'm going to use cosine again. So it's going to be the mass, right, which was 0 0.400, multiplied then by the uh, cosine of 48.5 this time. Okay, and now let's check, see if these results work out. So let's do the left-hand side. So 0.25 times 2 is just a half. So 0 0.0.5, right? And that should equal now, just do the calculation on the right. 0.25 times 1.5 times cosine of 45 plus 0.4 uh, times, oops, I forgot one value in there, right? I forgot the hypotenuse value in here. My apologies, I got to add the 0 0.866. I noticed that. So just multiply this by 0 0.866. Okay, that's sometimes what happens when you try to take shortcuts, right? The important thing is that you catch it before you give the answer. So times cosine of 48.5 multiplied by 0 0.866. And look at that. So basically now you'll say, well, it's not exactly identical because remember these answers that I we, we got for the, for the problem here, they're rounded. All right, so it should be slightly off, but not off by a significant margin, and it's not, it's gonna be 0.495. So I would say this definitely confirms the conservation. So guess what we would have to do now for the y? We do literally the same exact thing, right? We just gotta do all the y vectors of each, okay? So if you notice, is there any y vector for the first? No, so this is gone. Is there any y vector for the second before the collision? No, so that's gone. There's only y components after the collision. So therefore these, right, I, sh I could say something like this, zero, right, should equal the momentum. So M, uh, M1, right, multiplied by V1A in the Y direction plus M2, V2A in the Y direction. Let's hopefully this works out. So the mass of the first object was 0 0.25, okay, multiplied by the velocity. Remember the x component, so I need to know this, right? That's sine, so it's gonna be 1.5, 1 1.5 times the sine of 45, and then plus m2, which was, and I'm gonna write it actually underneath because I, eh, you know what, I'm gonna move this over a little bit. I think I can squeeze it in there. So we have uh, m2, which was 0 0.4, multiplied by the velocity. Now here's the y component of the second triangle, right? that I just drew in over here. Realize it's negative, all right? So that's going to now be negative uh, 0 0.886, multiplied then by the sine of 48.5. So let's throw that into the calculator and let's hopefully it comes out to be negative uh, zero. And let's see, point, uh, what do we got? 0.25 times 1.5 times sine of 45, okay, uh, plus 0.4 times negative 0.886 times sine of 48.5. And again, it works out to be a very small fraction, right? I mean, it's about uh, negative 2.64 times 10 to the minus four. So it's really something like the 0 0.0002, whatever, blah, blah, blah. So basically, yeah, they're, they're the same. The reason why they're slightly off is because of the rounding. So that confirms it. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. Look forward to helping you out in the next question. Take care now.